So in 8.6, we're going to continue to talk about angles, but specifically now pairs of angles. So let's uh, take a look at the vocabulary word. We have three pairs of angles we're going to talk about um, before we get started. So we have complementary angles. Uh, complementary angles are uh, two positive angles who measures, whose measures have a sum of 90. So if the angle measures add up to 90, those two angles are complementary. So complementary angles are two angles... whose measures have a sum of 90. So if two angles add up to 90, then they're complementary. Similarly, supplementary angles are two angles who have, uh, whose measures have a sum of 180. Uh, so if two measures have a sum of 180, then those are supplementary angles. So supplementary angles would be two angles whose measures have a sum of 180. So 90 is complementary, 180 is supplementary. That's what we have to remember. And then adjacent angles. Adjacent angles are basically two angles that are next to each other. Specifically, they share a common vertex and a side. So for example, um, if I draw an angle here, and an angle here, although these two angles are next to each other, they're not adjacent because they don't share a side. They would have to look like this here and here. These two angles are adjacent because they share a side and a vertex. So adjacent angles are two angles that share a common vertex and side. Let's write that definition for adjacent. Two angles. that share a common vertex and side. And they obviously can't have two sides in common, it would just be the same angle. So one side in common, in the example I drew, it's this side that I'm drawing in purple right there, and then obviously the vertex right there. So those are adjacent angles. So let's go ahead, um, in example one, we're just gonna identify what types of angles we have here. So you'll take a look um, in the figure, we've got several different angles. Now keep in mind, the angles I have here could be angle CAR, there's one angle, could be angle CAD, could also be angle RAD. So really in that one part, I have three angles. And then I obviously also have angle RST. So I've got really four different angles there. We're gonna combine these in ways that we can get complementary angles, supplementary angles, and adjacent angles. So let's take a look at this. We have to name things, aside from maybe uh, this angle over here, we could call that angle S. We can't call either of these angles A because A is the vertex to multiple different angles. So it says in the figure, name a pair of complementary angles, a pair of supplementary angles, and a pair of adjacent angles. So let's start with complementary. If I'm gonna name a pair of complementary angles, that means they're gonna add up to 90. So my goal here is to find two things that add up to 90. Well, let's scan the measures that we have. 37, 127, and 53. If I were to add up this whole angle here, just kind of note that, what would we get? You should be getting 164. So maybe just worth noting, we do have an angle that measures 164, which doesn't really help us right here because I'm trying to find measures that add up to 90. So it's not these two angles, it's not 37 plus 27. So let's um, try a few others. Um, I know that 127 plus 53 is gonna be way more than 90. What about 53 plus 37? What happens if I add 53 plus 37 degrees? Hey, I get 90 degrees, which means those two angles are complementary. So now I need to name the angles. I need to name this angle that's 37 degrees. I can either call it CAR or RAC doesn't really matter which one. So angle, uh, I guess actually this should be a B. Sorry, I think it just got cut off. So let's change that to a B. Um, so angle CAB and my other angle on the other side, angle RST are complementary. And that's how we would say it. Two angles that add up to 90 are complementary.
Let's move on to supplementary. Now I'm looking for two angles that add up to 180. Think 180, that's obviously a lot bigger than 90. Let's add uh, 127 and 37, we know it's 164. What about 127 plus 53? Hey, 127 degrees plus 53 degrees is 180, which means those two angles, angle C, A, D, and angle R, S, T, are supplementary and then the last thing uh, they want us to do is find a pair of adjacent angles so adjacent angles would be two angles that share a common side and vertex well take a look at our first picture here c a or ray a c is a part of two angles it's a part of angle c a b and angle C, A, D. Notice they, sh they share the same vertex. Vertex is always the middle letter, so A and A, so that's right. So those two are adjacent angles. Adjacent, supplementary, and complementary. Three different ways we can classify angles and pairs of angles. So let's go ahead and take a look at the next example. The next example now um, is gonna give us some information and ask us to find missing angle measures. Um, we're also going to have to use the angle addition postulate from back in, I think, 8.2. Uh, so we'll have to remember that as well. So part A says, um, part A is going to be this first picture, says angle 1 is a complement of angle 2, and the measure of angle 1 equals 62, find the measure of angle 2. So what it means if they're complements, it means they add up to 90, and that's why we're able to put that little mark there that represents 90. So I know that these two angles add up to 90. The angle addition postulate says that if I add the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2, it should be the total, which they just told us would be 90 because of the word complement. Okay? Now, I know the measure of angle 1. It's 62. So let's fill that in, and then we have ourselves a little equation. 62 plus the measure of angle 2 equals 90. You can solve this by subtracting 62 on both sides. And we'll get that the measure of angle 2 is 28 degrees. You might even have been able to do that in your head or with like reasoning, because if we know these two are 90, we just have to basically subtract 62 from 90. Similarly, part B says angle 3 is a supplement of angle 4, so that means they're supplementary angles. They should add up to 180. We know that angle 4 is 47 degrees. If I want to find angle 3, kind of like what I just did, I'm going to subtract what I have, which is 47, from 180. So I'll go 180 minus 47 degrees, which means the missing angle measure, which in this case is the measure of angle 3, is 133 degrees. So again, we're using the angle addition postulate, which basically says we can add two parts of angles. We're also using our vocab words from this section, complementary, supplementary, and adjacent. Two more pairs of angles that we have. Let's take a look at our next two pairs of angles. We have linear pairs and vertical angles. So let's talk about what a linear pair is. Think about the word linear. We've learned about linear equations. The word linear means line. So a linear pair would be two adjacent angles that have a non-common side that are opposite rays. So it's basically, if I were to kind of give you the the Reader's Digest version there, it's basically two angles that form a line, two adjacent angles that form a line. Two adjacent angles that form a line would be a linear pair. Vertical angles, um, it says the two angles whose sides form two pairs of opposite rays. So I'm actually gonna draw a picture. I think drawing a picture for vertical angles would be the easiest. So vertical angles have to be formed by two pairs of opposite rays. So let's say I wanna draw a ray here. The opposite ray basically would go, that was bad. The opposite ray would basically go in the opposite direction. Remember, opposite rays form a line. So there's one pair of opposite rays. Remember, this is a line. So there's one pair of opposite rays forming a line. I need another pair of opposite rays. So I'll draw maybe a ray here and its opposite ray right there. So again, forming a line. 
what happens is those two opposite pairs form vertical angles. This angle and this angle would be vertical angles. So you can think about it as they're angles that are across from each other. Um, they have to be formed by two pairs of opposite rays, so it has to be two lines crossing, okay? And they have to be across from each other. So those are our vertical angles. So now let's go ahead and identify some linear pairs and vertical angles. So it says identify all the linear pairs and all the vertical angles in the picture or in the figure. So let's start by creating our two, pair, two uh, categories here. We're going to identify all of our linear pairs and all of our vertical angles. So I'm just going to make two columns here and I'm under each column I'm going to write all of the pairs. So a linear pair would be two angles that form a line. Okay, let's take a look at the lines that we have here. That might help us. I have a line right here. I have a line right here, and that's it. Notice how this is not a line. Why is that not a line? Think about why that's not a line. It's not a line because it's a ray, so it can't form any linear pairs. So I'm not even gonna worry about that. That means two and three are probably out because they can't form a linear pair. They're not on a line, they're on a ray. They have a ray. So what I do notice is that on this first line, one and four form that line. So my first pair would be angle one and angle four. On my other line right here, on the top I have three, two, and one. So three angles would not be a pair, so that's not gonna work. On the other side I have four and five. So angle four and angle five are a linear pair. So those are my two linear pairs. Let's take a look at vertical angles. Again, vertical angles have to be where two lines intersect. I have my two lines. The two lines intersect right here, which means I can look at this side or this side. Where's a just two angles? Take a look. This is two and three. If I would combine two and three, then they would be a vertical pair with four. But instead, I just have to look for an angle and an angle, that would be one and five. So angle one and angle five are vertical angles. All right, let's take a look at the last problem here. <clears throat> the last problem says two angles form a linear pair. The measure of one angle is five times the measure of the other angle. Find the measure of each angle. So we've got a couple pieces of information. We know there's two angles. So I'm gonna start by labeling our two angles. I'm just gonna call it the measure of angle one because I know I'm gonna find the measure and the measure of angle two. So not very creative, my two angles will be. So I know that those two angles form a linear pair. So I know that the measure of angle one plus the measure of angle two are going to equal 180. That's what it would mean if they form a linear pair because they're on a line, a line is 180. Then it says the measure of one angle is five times the measure of the other angle. So let's write that as an equation. The measure of one angle, let's just say the measure of the first angle, is five times the measure of the second angle. So that this gets a little less confusing, I'm going to now replace the measure of angle two with x. Oops. So we're going to call the measure of angle two x, which means this would be 5x. So the measure of angle one is five x, and the measure of angle two is x. So this is now five x, this is now x, and it should equal 180. So now that I have my variables in there, I can actually solve this. Five x plus x is six x equals 180, and I can solve that, which means x is 30. So the measure of the second angle is 30. We need to figure out what is the first angle. Well, the first angle is five times x. So the measure of angle one should be five times 30, which means the measure of angle one is 150. So my two angles are 150 and 30. Let's really quick make sure that those are a linear pair. 150 plus 30 is 180. They form a linear pair. One of them is five times the other one, so those are my two angle measures. So that's pairs of angles. We have supplementary, complementary, adjacent angles. We have linear pairs and we have vertical angles. Make sure you know all of those vocab words are going to be really important and go ahead and practice this then.